a new report out this morning is highlighting some major concerns with Canada's children. Canada has one of the highest infant mortality rates among developed countries. There's been a 66% increase in emergency room visits for kids due to mental health concerns over the past 10 years. One in three Canadians experience some form of abuse as a child, and 1.2 million children live in low-income housing. Joining us this morning is the Managing Director of Children First, Trish Monjan. Thank you so much for being here, Trish. Thank you. Um, so let, let's get right into this. This is a, a follow-up to a report that your organi organization did two years ago. That's correct. Uh, based on the snapshot from then and today, have things gotten better? Have they gotten worse? We don't really think that things have gotten better. Uh, the, the statistics are still very alarming about the state of children in Canada. And, you know, Canadians tend to think that this is the best place in the world for kids to grow up, but the statistics are showing us something else. And what, what's shocking is that that list that I read off off the top of this segment, it covers a whole lot of different issues. I mean, it does. This would require, in order for a, a government or a number of governments to address this. We're talking massive policy changes, aren't we? We are. So, so, so how would you suggest a government start wrestling with these problems? Well, I think they, you know, it, they need to start somewhere. And certainly there are three things that we're advocating for. The first is um, we're advocating for a commission of children and youth. This has been something that has been um, promoted for a long time and, and this would be a government, uh, an independent office of government the, the uh, commissioner would advocate for children, would uh, look for best practices with children, would be uh, doing research on children, and would be the voice for children. And we think that would be great. The second thing that we think needs to happen is that the federal government needs to publish a children's budget. This would be a budget that would allow us to track what the investment is, the funding investment is, for children in Canada. And that way we can be accountable and we can know where the shortfalls are. We can know where, uh, if the distribution of, of those uh, spend or that spending is uh, equitable. And is it actually being uh, used to fund um, evidence-based research? Yeah. You know, what's, what's the best for kids? Now, there's also the Canadian Children's Charter, which uh, is an initiative specifically from your organization. It is. Talk to me about what this would do for kids. So the Canadian Children's Charter was uh, started last year. Uh, it started with a lot of input from children and youth right across Canada uh, through electronic format, through uh, focus groups, etc. And then in November, uh, we had youth delegates come together in Ottawa to actually draft the first Canadian Children's Charter. Then we went back and got more input from kids and adults right across Canada and brought our youth back together in Ottawa again in October, or in, sorry, in June. And our youth review team is in the process of finalizing the Canadian Children's Charter. And what it is, is it's a roadmap for the government at all levels on what needs to be done. It's by kids, by, for kids. It's about children's rights. It, it takes into account the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child and really lays out what kids need. So in, it breaks it down into small sections. So we don't have to address everything at once but these are the things that the kids need in order to thrive in Canada. Well, Trish, as we begin this new school year and all this attention that we're, we've got is placed on kids, thank you so much for being here today and sharing this really important information. We appreciate it. Thank you so much.